If you're like me, you like watching things. Like the Craig and Chris show on YouTube. It's my favorite thing. Thanks, Gary. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary Busey, for the, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful words. The kind words. The yes. kind words. You see, it does pay to be a Google Plus celebrity. He's very, he's very lucid today too, which is nice. <laughs> very lucid, very lucid. Hey, everybody! Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh, I'm Craig. In case we didn't lose you from the intro, <laughs> I'm Craig, and I'm Chris. And this is Chris, and uh, this is the Craig and Chris Show, where we talk about stuff that interests us and hopefully interests you. That's right. Come along with us, children. And Gary. <laughs> and Gary. Join Craig, Chris, and Gary Busey as we explore the Amazon Fire TV today, which I'm excited about. And of yes. course, we'll be sharing our Xbox One review as well. We've had it long enough. Yeah, we figured we had it long enough, got to mess with it long enough that we can kind of provide a decent review of it. And we also will be discussing viewer comments from you guys, Yep, which will be fun. Clips of the week. Which we have an exciting thing to announce when we get to that. We do. Yes. Ooh, I'm excited. And uh, finally, we. Oh yeah, that was the exciting yes. part. I just read it on there. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. It's right here on our list. <laughs> hey, we're organized people. We're getting. Sometimes out. we're so <laughs> organized that I get ahead of the list. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, anyways, if you're joining us for the first time, subscribe at craigandchris.com and bring you to YouTube. Click the subscribe button. And if you want to follow our stories that we talk about in the show, check out our magazine, craigandchris.com forward slash flipboard. flipboard. That's flipboard. Right, That's Flipboard. Flipboard. Only the greatest magazine app in the planet. Ever. Okay. Okay. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. It's been a good week. It's been a good week, but a slow week for news, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. It's true. But hey, you know what the great thing about snow, slow news weeks is? Usually you're happier. Yes. No kidding. <laughs> the less news there is, usually the better things are going for you. Um, no news is good news. <laughs> and, and that's true 100% of the time. Okay, so let's go into the Amazon Fire TV because this was a huge unveiling. Probably the biggest thing. The biggest thing this week was the Amazon yeah. Fire TV. And if you're watching the show now, it's probably last week because we kind of have a weird time. That's okay. There are ideas from three years ago. <laughs> That's true. So the Amazon Fire TV, as you guys can see on the screen right now, is essentially Amazon's approach to streaming media services. Yes. Through the Amazon TV Amazon Fire TV service, they hope to compete with the Roku box and Apple TV uh, through their own, they call them set-top boxes. And essentially, this little box connects to your wireless internet or wired internet, and it allows you to stream Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Instant, and everybody was complaining, not HBO Go. Yeah, pretty much, if you don't know what these things are, you're my grandmother. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Now, I saw Amazon, you, I even texted you. I saw yeah. this Amazon Fire TV, and I'm so used to Amazon doing things right that I was like, oh crap, I should have went with Amazon instead of Apple. Because, yeah. you know, I had to choose an ecosystem. Because when you buy movies, you're pretty much tied to the DRM service you sure. choose, right? So I was like, if I go Apple, then I have to always have an Apple device to stream my music. There's no way they're going to let anybody, my movies, there's no way they're going to let anybody else, actually, and music, stream it. Yes. And so I decided not to do Amazon because I thought they were too widespread. Too widespread. And I trusted Apple. I don't okay. know why. I just trusted them to, to properly handle long-term licensing because, okay. because they're so big. So that was the route I took. And so I saw this. I was like, crap. I, I took it similarly, but only because I had bought stuff from Apple before there was such a thing as set-top boxes. And... <laughs> That's true, too. That's true. So you were already married to the ecosystem. How bad is it when you're like you're you're already in the ecosystem and you didn't even realize it? Oh yeah, that's that's good marketing. I had like TV shows and movies that I had on like my old iPod, and then so when the the Apple TV came out, it was like well. And, the, and for the record, <laughs> we, we love our Apple TV. The it. only downside of it is it doesn't have Amazon Instant. It's the only thing it doesn't mm -hmm. have, uh, which would be nice if it had it. But yeah. we'll go into that a little bit later. So Amazon Fire TV, we I was like, is this is gonna TV. be this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. And then I read the reviews. 
It's not great. The reviews aren't great. No, it's not great. It's got three out of five stars so far. That's, um, and yeah. it's because everybody is saying it's a step backwards. Really? In, in multimedia. It's a okay. step backwards. The, I think the biggest... That sucks. I think I know. I think the biggest problem with this Amazon is that you marketed it as a media set-top box. Amazon, Instant, Hulu. Oh, and, and games. And games. Games are the only thing that really is unique about your box, and it's the least talked about feature on all of your marketing. Yeah. You know, and really, that's the only reason to get an Amazon Fire TV. Be. You know what I mean? I get, yeah, I mean. Because they got that little controller if you want it. It comes with the controller or do you have to buy the no, separate? No, you have to buy a separate. Well, there's a shock. <laughs> but, I mean, it's the only thing that's different than, like, why would you buy, like, Roku? I don't know. And, and. We've had a Roku I, and an Apple TV, haven't we? Have you, have I've you? had a Roku, yeah. And it's like, why would you buy? And well, I think, didn't they kind of come out marketing it? This is like, not only is it a functional set-top box, but it's like, the one. Yeah, it's like, that's true. I'm sorry, but if you arrive this late in the game, you should have your shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should at least have the features that all the other ones have. HBO Go, all the other channels, and all that. And then they they yeah, because I mean even Chromecast, which is yeah, what like 30, half the price? No, or less, less. Like a third? thirty thirty five dollars for Chromecast. It's like a third of the price of everything else. Yep. and it's got it's got HBO Go. Yep, and well, it's got everything so, pretty much everything except for Apple. Yeah. But still, these, these set-top boxes are the future of streaming media entertainment. They've pretty much been good. here for three years, right? That's all good and well. But you can't release a product this late in the game that's inferior and doesn't have all the same features. Well, I mean, and certainly not by saying it's not inferior. Yeah. Because like, that just draws to the attention of what it is. Right. Oh, uh, this is the best one. I think it's a good move on their part, but I think it would have been a much more, like, it would have been such a common-sense solution for people looking for a set-top box and had Amazon Prime already. Like, it would have just been fine. I'll buy it. I didn't see a lot of the announcement, but the vibe that I get from people is that they came out and said, Behold, it's awesome. <laughs> and then everyone else is kind of like, I already got one at home. <laughs> well, let's talk about one of the features in it, the voice command. That's the revolutionary technology they've announced in it, that you can talk into the microphone and do searches, right? As Gary Busey said, even. Yep. Gary Busey liked that feature especially because he hates when his technology doesn't listen. Well, that's because his fingers don't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of our promoter. Yeah, that's, sorry, Gary. Not cool. I know. I'm he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I've never actually considered the fact that he might actually just show up and eat us. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a much better show if Gary Busey just showed up behind us. He's like, hey, watch Craig and Chris show. <laughs> I don't know what that was. He might. That might have been him. It's Gary Busey. Okay, so anyways, uh, this this voice command feature, it is a great feature. I think that's a great idea, but it only works for Amazon. They're, they're Amazon Instant. Oh, really? Just yes. that? That's it. That's, that's it. It doesn't work for Netflix. It doesn't work for Hulu. It doesn't work for any of the other channels. It only works for the Amazon channel. Are they going to broaden that? I have no idea. So that's not really that great of a feature unless you're already married to the Amazon ecosystem. But don't advertise it as if it's, aren't you sick and tired of having to get up and type in your little buttons to, to do a search? Well, fear not. You won't have to do that anymore with the Amazon Fire TV, which isn't true because you will still Actually, have to do it we with don't, every other channel. We don't know that that's how it functions. According to the commercial, you might just get your very own Gary Busey and you say, Gary, I'd like to watch I'd like to watch Hot in Cleveland. <laughs> that would have been a better commercial. If you said, Gary Busey, and then all of a sudden he just jumps in through your wall, like bursts through your wall in your house. Maybe. And I mean, shows you how to use it. Or he walks he up there and actually does the remote search for you. Is it bad that now I think it's actually a cool product? Like, if it came with that, that actually is helping me. <laughs> no, that's what we call... Everybody should be hiring us as marketers. Like, and you know what would be even better is you, you tell Gary Busey, I'd like to watch this now. But, like, you'll say, oh, hey, I'd like to watch Shark Week or something, right? <laughs> and then he just goes, Amazon, watch Lethal Weapon. <laughs> No, that's not what I said. And then he'll he'll be like, Amazon, watch something else I was in. Or if Gary Busey, Point break. Or if or, Gary Busey just comes up and starts acting out Shark Week. Oh my God, I want that now. <laughs> Screw the Fire TV. I just want my own Gary Busey. Can you 
imagine that? Just walking down the street with your own Gary Busey on a leash. <laughs> Gary Busey robot. It's like on a leash and shit. Uh, <laughs> he has Down the, Gary. No, no, put up the picture, the hair. Yeah. <laughs> put up a picture of the hair. I can just see. It seems like the most oh. appropriate actor in Hollywood to have a leash. And I guess we can... <laughs> <laughs> We're moving past Fire TV after this, I almost by the way. think he would leash himself to his own yard. <laughs> and someone go, why'd you do that, sir? So I didn't get out. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Uh, we didn't even say, in case you didn't know, Gary Busey is the, the person they picked for uh, no, you the popped commercial. His, you had to have shown their, his picture. By oh, now. I showed his picture. They know who he is. But he, he's in the commercial. If you haven't seen the actual commercial... <laughs> Please go watch Make it. Make sure you record your first reaction and send it to us. Craig at Craig the Teacher, Craig the Tech Teacher dot com. I want to see your your genuine reaction to the Gary Busey commercial. Email it to me, Craig at Craig the Tech Teacher dot com. Well, please. The thing is, is it worked? It did. We're talking about we're it. Talking about it. We're talking about it. But it, it was good. Okay, let's move past this. Amazon Fire TV is a no go. Everybody, buy the Roku yeah. box. Like, yeah. I mean, have they yeah. announced anything that's coming? Uh, no. It just came out last week, dude. Yeah, but I mean, <clears throat> again, they're like the slow kid in the race. They need to have their no. guns ready to go. No, they don't. Okay, no. It's it's. Don't worry. Don't. If you how want, much? What's it's hundred bucks, right? Hundred dollars, ninety nine dollars. If you want a set top box, wow. Buy the Roku two for like sixty dollars. I think it's sixty. Or the Roku three for eighty, or eighty five. I seriously. And, and, and the, the technology is it was like light years ahead of the Amazon, uh, the Apple one. The thing is, the is, yeah. If, if, or buy an Apple TV. If you're or a Chromecast. If you're in Apple, go with Apple. Which true. It's absolutely worth the money. Yeah, it's awesome. If hundred dollars also. With Amazon and stuff, go with Roku. It's yeah, worth go the with money. the Roku. It's better. You don't think either of those two are worth the money? Get a Chromecast. Chromecast. It's worth the money. Chromecast has actually Chromecast is just as good as Roku in its own way. Yeah. But the the UI isn't as good on Chromecast. Uh, it doesn't come with a controller either. A remote. Yeah. You need to use your phone. Yeah. So there's, I mean, a, there's a couple, but still, it's thirty five bucks. It's yeah. And it's like this big. It's just a little little plugs right into your. Actually, HDMI. Roku makes one. No, Roku makes one of those now. It's called Roku Stick. And it's just a plug in stick, and it's wired. So, it's awesome. That's. I think that's the real problem. Is they're kind of late. Yeah, a little late to the game. Xbox One review. Man, it's almost like this is going to be too long of a video today. I need it? to ask Gary what he thinks. Gary? What do you think? Me too. Me, I agree. 150%. Okay. So I'm not sure. Should we lead with the good or the bad? On the Xbox know, One? Yeah, or just like randomly? We'll bounce between it because okay. I think there's some pros and cons. We've, okay. been, we've had our Xboxes. I've had it since launch day. Chris has had his for about a month and a half, month. Yeah, month and a half. Yeah, and uh, we decided we're finally going to say, "Here's here's what you'll expect if you went out and bought an Xbox One today." Yeah, headaches, but non headaches as well. So there's a yeah. little bit of both. It's a mix. It's a mix. It's a mix. Um, we originally had Xbox 360s. Yeah. So uh, let's start with the controller. Thoughts on the controller, Chris? Uh, I love it. I do too. I personally love it. Uh, I like that they got rid of the battery brick on the back the little battery uh -huh. slot uh -huh. they made that internal uh so your hands have nice room to stretch out uh they they kind of flared out the side so it just fits better in the yep. hand there's uh, one complaint i have about the controller what's that is that when you're when your controller dies while playing titanfall oh yeah and you have to switch batteries it does not show you which way to put in the batteries that's true. It, it's like it's like you have to look at just in the light because I don't know about you. I play my games in the dark, so I'm like getting the little bit of reflection so I can see the little tiny plus and minus. That is the, true. That is true. When you're going through the only thing that drives you're going me through nuts. battery panic because your friends are going, "Yo, dude, you still there?" Battery Hello? panic. Where'd I, you go? And you're like, where, where, oh, yeah. oh. You're, and you're like freaking throwing remotes across the room because you're opening up the it's back true. panel. They don't. Like, they don't mark triple you know, A. They don't mark the plus or minus. So it's a little bit like red wire, blue wire, you know, like, what, but you can't, I, I got the perfect remedy to battery panic, by the way. Okay. The Energizer battery charging pack is out. I had this for the Xbox 360 mm. and it is amazing. Okay. Finally came out. Definitely worth the money. Um, and it, it's just got a little dock and you okay. dock your controller on it, charges them and uh, you're good to go. 
Sweet. So I'll put a link to that one in there. So uh, controller's a plus. Controller's good. I'm giving it. I'm giving uh, the controller. I saw a good an article one. on Thumbs Flipboard up. the other day where someone was complaining that they're issuing another update for the controller because you can update your controller now through Which the I, system. Yeah. I like that actually. Me um, too. The continued support for the controller. They've got firmware updates that you can upload to the controller, which is nice because if something's screwed up or not responsive or maybe conflicts or something with another game, mm -hmm. it just like uh, was uh, Respawn Entertainment actually said they helped tweak it. Yeah. Tweak it. So game developers can actually help make the controller experience better. Yes. So I, I, so I like the controller. Okay, graphics. What do you think about graphics? I like them. They're good. Amazing, actually. Uh, I expected less from the beginning of next gen. Uh, because I'm one of those guys. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm one of those guys who I, I pretty much assume that when a new system comes out, it's just like what happened with the 360 and with the um, PlayStation 3. Mm -hmm. The first games that come out are somewhat impressive, but it takes a, like developers a year to actually tap into the potential. Yeah, I agree. That's what with it that. feels like. But but like sitting down, like if, playing a game like Assassin's funny, Creed Black Flag. What's funny is a lot I of I feel the, like I'm playing a next gen game. A lot of the half and half games though, at least for last generation, if you go back and play some of them, you're like, wow, that feels so old. PlayStation two yeah. or Xbox original. It is funny, it's because the ones that usually bridge the gap don't really represent what the Yeah, it's not generation it's not a leap. But when you look at like what we were saying with Black Flag yeah. from three sixty to Black Flag for Xbox One. I mean, it is a substantial leap. I thought so, yeah. So, I mean, it, you feel like you're playing, and most importantly, that's what it comes down to, you feel like you're playing a next-gen game. It's a lot of atmospheric that's, stuff that just adds to the experience. Yeah, a lot of texturing, um, a lot of stuff the PC guys who are paying a crap load of money for their PCs got to experience and us console guys didn't. Yes. You don't like the PC guys, do you? <laughs> I, I love the PC. Don't say that. I love, I love the PC guys. They just, just the people who... It's like, everybody's got to be a fanboy. <sighs> I love the PC guys, but I mean... If I play a console, I recognize that it won't be as graphically good as PC, and I'm okay with that. Right. Personally. It's a life choice. Yeah. It's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. Uh, but with the graphics thing, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. Good got man. a lot of flack for not doing the 720p, 1080 from the launch. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all temporary. Uh, uh, yeah. That's uh, actually almost every game going for, forward will probably be 1080. I would guess, for the most part. Uh, and, and if it's that, I mean, who knows how... Who knows? So, like I said, I mean, if you want the best graphics, you're on PC. Or you, if you want the best console graphics, you're still buying a PlayStation. And you still might buy a PlayStation if you can find them. Yeah, Good PlayStation PlayStation 4 is graphically superior, but that's all. That's what it was designed to do. Which moves us into games. Yes. And, yeah. I've been I've been pleased. I've been I mean, ha I've been happy with what I've had, but I unless you're a Titanfall guy, I don't see a re a game yet to run out and buy an well, Xbox for. Unless you're unless you're Dead a racer, Rising's pretty good. Pretty. I mean, I, I, I'm not. I, I wouldn't spend six hundred bucks on a console. I wouldn't. Me. I wouldn't say it's a. Yeah, it's not a system seller. Yeah. Uh, but it is very. It's it's good. I mean, it's it's competent and. And we fun. have a we have a gameplay of it, by the way, guys. If you want to see it, yeah, that's awesome. click on that little that little icon of making Chris come up. Our gameplays to go to our channel. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that um, compared to other generations and stuff, right? These games actually they they did pretty well. Yeah, I mean, Black Flag is a nice one, but that's for both. Um, but it is very good. It's very good. Uh, for exclusives, uh, Rise has been pretty awesome. It's been very enjoyable. Wouldn't mm -hmm. buy a system with it, though. No, definitely not. Um, Dead Rising 3 has been very enjoyable. Wouldn't buy the system for it, though. If you're a big racer, I could see buying a system for maybe Forza. If you're okay. big into racing games. I'm really not, so I haven't. I'm not either. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's just like, I don't think that there's anything that's like a deal breaker yet, except for Titanfall. Mm -hmm. That's the only game I could see going out and buying an Xbox right now for. And I think they knew that. Well, yeah. provided you're not. I mean, I would say that that goes to the people who are playing 360 and going to make the Switch. Titanfall's a great game to do it with. Agreed. Now let's move into the less talked about feature, which I think is one of the best. Multimedia. Yeah, that was a big... The whole watch TV thing. Everybody thought it was like kind of silly that they were doing this, and I got it set up because he told me to. To try and, it out. And it actually works. Yeah, I like it. Like 60% of the time, it works. <laughs> it's, like it's, voice command. it's awesome. Well, I, th I think the best thing they could say is I think a lot of people get hung up with why why do I have to get the Kinect? <laughs> and I think yeah. a lot of that trouble comes from the original Kinect being yeah. completely useless. Yeah, pretty um, much. I, I, 
I think this one's a lot better. Way um, better. Substantially better. But I mean, just the amount of... I use it every time. So... Okay, okay. For those of you who don't know this, if you have an Xbox One, your Xbox can... can give commands to your receiver, your surround sound receiver, to your television, and to your Xbox, and you yep. can actually run a lot of your devices, um, volume levels, television, your cable television, mm -hmm. right yep. from your Xbox. And this isn't just like, oh, cool, I can watch TV through my Xbox. You can actually control these devices by voice commands. And it's mm -hmm. not like it's not like Amazon Fire TV's voice commands, where it only <laughs> works with one channel. Like yeah. everything on the Xbox Marketplace, Hulu, Netflix, um, uh, it, all of. If you're on Comcast, I think it is like almost all yeah. of the the menu, the navigation, the guides all support voice commands. And like almost, there's almost the whole store, the whole marketplace. The only thing that drives me nuts is that you can't do a voice to text search. I hear that. So yeah. you have to pull up the controller or your uh, smart glass mm -hmm. to type in the search. That's the only thing that doesn't work on it. See, and smart, la smart glass is uh, allegedly oh. getting an update in April that will let you control your uh, cable guide, if you still have cable, through your uh, your smart glass. Right. And it looked pretty cool. I mean, I'm definitely going to try it. Um, and since I don't have cable, I have Apple TV. I was actually able to hook up my Apple TV to my Xbox. So when I say watch TV, it launches my Apple TV. How cool yeah. is that? I think it's pretty. I think it's nice. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was skeptical about it. I was like, well, who would want to do that? This is me in the morning. Like, right? I wake up. I wake up. I'm exhausted. This is me every morning. I'm not a morning person. So I go down the stairs and I'm like, I'm walking by my TV. My Xbox on, and I just keep walking. Yeah. And my Xbox turns on, turns on my TV, turns on my uh, my surround sound, and I walk in there and I pour my cup of coffee, which is automatically set to turn on. <laughs> I wish. And then I start, no it is. No, I mean, I, gotta, mine, I wish. Oh, I got a timer. So then I drink my coffee and walk in there and, you know, it's on. So then I can say Xbox, watch TV, and I'm like half asleep. You know, and it'll pop up my Apple TV and it's awesome. I yeah, like no, it. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty skeptical of that being useful. Uh, but the, the, the voice command stuff works well enough that I use it frequently. I mean, you think, well, why can't I just switch the input on my remote? And maybe this is just a test of it, how lazy we've gotten as people. <laughs> that could be part of it. But my God, it is nice to go just watch TV. Yeah. And remember, it only works 60% of the time. So you will be talking to the TV yeah. repeatedly. It isn't something that's completely fluid. Uh, but as you kind of get better at it, it does actually work more and more. I would say the time You kind of learn like naturally what works and what doesn't. The, the pros definitely outweigh the cons yeah, I agree, in I agree that, with that sense. Um, the, the interesting thing is, is like I do find myself wishing other stuff had it. Yeah, that's true. This is an exaggeration, but it's kind of like toilet flush. <laughs> I mean, you do. I do kind of sit there. I like with my computer. I wish I could just say computer on. <laughs> Why not? You probably you could know. get something for that. But still, I, that's kind of cool. You, I, I just find it. I mean, like when you do have to reach for the remote, it is frustrating. Uh, the mo, uh, the connect motion thing. Uh, after you use the voice commands, this is actually too much of a pain in the butt. Yeah, oh, the voice absolutely. commands are easier than the hand gestures, which is not like the, in the la in the first connect. I think that's really the big hang up is the first connect sucked so bad. Everybody was kind of like that. Even if you were in the Microsoft camp before, and the thought of switching over was like, well, but I hate that connect. Yep. This one does work a lot. It does better. work a lot better. And on the final note for the connect, I have to throw out here is that Xbox Fitness includes like a ton of workout things for those of you who are kind of into exercise and all that um tons of workouts completely free with gold and the tracking on that connect is phenomenal compared to the original one and it works on a smaller living room too so mm -hmm. it works on mine it's got a wider angle lens uh so that i think is if you're into that at all which i'm not really because you know, i'm not saying i'm fat but i'm, I'm out of shape Really good at hiding it. Well, uh, and, and another thing much. about it too uh, was because we had you know long established Xbox accounts already, mm -hmm. is that if if you're already kind of in that ecosystem, ecosystem, talk as, ecosystem as you say, today. Um, switching over is easy. Yeah, very easy. Easy. Whoa! Uh, ooh. Oh, no, what were you I thought of a downside. You have to have a Microsoft email to have a gamer tag on your Xbox, even if you don't have an Xbox Live account. That's kind of annoying. So if you have a buddy come over and play, they have to have an actual email attached to a gamer tag, even unless they play as a guest. Yeah, I haven't set up a guest account yet to test that stuff out. But yeah, it seems like you do have to have an Xbox Live account. Yes, you do. 
Um, which that is kind of annoying. Oh, and and get ready to cold boot. We're throwing out some negatives here. This is uh, where this is where things kind of get ugly. Yeah. Uh, it is a Microsoft product. If it doesn't function properly, it'll go in. Most of the time, it goes into standby. So if I say Xbox turn off, it goes into standby, and then it comes out of standby. But that's where most of the problems come in. Is the thing never actually turns off. And so a lot of times you have to actually go in and cold boot if you have a problem. So you have to unplug it, wait 15 seconds, and plug it back in. Well, unfortunately, yeah, now we're entering into the stuff that um, is kind of frustrating. There's, there's some uh, And I've, ha I've actually had, I've had more, I think it's, it's been both easier than the Xbox 360 mm -hmm. and both more frustrating. Yes. Um, and part of it does come from how your mind is kind of wired to your last system. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, why doesn't it just do it like this? So I'm not going to count stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but we've been playing Titanfall, as you may have heard, <laughs> Craig and I, and we've <laughs> experienced the most obnoxious issues with uh, the chat system. Yeah. Uh, like it not working at all. Like and at and all. we found out it was a controller bug. It might be. A, I'm, I'm, that might be what it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. Because after I, a lot of our problems went away when I switched to the Connect as the voice chat. A, Which, lot, a lot of them went away, and that works amazing. That actually works too. really well. Uh, you come in Sounds perfect. Sounds great. Yeah, because uh, see, I had to do it. What was going on was our headset to our controller was like it, like I don't know about you, but my mute button looked like yeah, it worked, like it, the lights it, would work it, and the sound would work for uh, the controller. My lights would work occasionally. Really? My plus minus would work occasionally as well for the audio levels. My audio, all that stuff was working. He just couldn't hear me at all. It yeah. was not reading the mic. And so we just had to either not play or use the Connect. Again, all technology now as it comes out, because they have this ability to update remotely, they release it incomplete. Yeah, and that... I'm sure they'll fix it, though. Like, the stuff that used to be real easy, like getting on and playing a game with your friends, used to be easy on Xbox 360, has been kind of a pain in the ass. I have one more big pet peeve about this. Okay. You can't snap achievements. Have you tried? No, I haven't tried. You know what the snap is? Like you say, Xbox Snap, and it actually will snap a Which is one of the cool the features. It's one of the cool features, right? I never thought I'd use it, but I actually use it more than I thought I would. So yeah. I said, Xbox snatch it, Snap Achievements. Sorry, snatch. you cannot snap yeah. achievements. I'm like, that would be like the one thing I'd want to snap. Because it's like, if I get an achievement now, it, it says to hold that button for more details, and then it pauses your game. Then it has to open achievements, which takes like, for some reason, like five minutes. Yeah. And then it launches your achievements, and then it shows you the achievement finally, and you're like, you killed five kittens. And I'm like, what game am I playing? So then I went out of achievements and back to the game, but it's like this three-minute, four-minute process. Yeah. Well, and then I was like, you know what? Maybe I can just snap it. So I said, Xbox snap achievements, and it, Bing! you cannot have snap achievements. Bing! I'm like, what? Yeah. It's I, achievements. I have to say the achievements as a whole have been largely overcomplicated. Yeah. It's like, what the heck? I mean, it wasn't that. I mean, they were cool, but I mean, it's not like now it goes to a whole big thing and it's like a fucking circus. You well, walk in there, it's like, duh. And it's got this big, like, whatever game you're playing, it's got like, here's your stats for this. Here's You've hit pause 95 times. You've, <laughs> you've hit pause 95 times. That's true. And Craig has played 1,300 hours of this. Tell his boss. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... Whoa, man. It's so true. I don't need it's this so much information. You've wasted this much of your life. You're going to die in 20... I mean, it's like, come on. Okay, let's move on because we're, we're this episode is going to be like an hour long. Okay. It is. Let's, find, let's finalize this with the value. Is it worth the money to you? Has it been worth the money? I got it personally. bundled with Titanfall, so yes. Okay. I would, I would definitely lean on the side of yes. I've enjoyed this console probably as much as I enjoyed the 360 when I first bought it, but I bought the 360 two years into it. Yeah. So the frustrations aside, I just, it has a lot of potential, and I just but I hope they actually tap into it. It seems they will. I'm hoping they will. I'm hoping they will. So well, the time will tell with that. But I think if you're if you're into the Xbox ecosystem already, you really love Titanfall. I'd go out, or you really love the idea of Titanfall. I would say that's worth the move forward. Well, I, in my opinion, price wise, a lot of people are thinking 500 is steep because it is. <laughs> um, but Agreed. I think if, if you get it with one of the bundles with a game, like I got it with Titanfall, um, I think, like again, I can just say that the, the, the Connect is actually worth the price. I think now, if I didn't get the discount that I did get when I bought it, I would still pay the money. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I at the time, I don't think I was willing to make that leap, whereas now I could say I probably would again. If it broke right now, I'd probably go buy another one. Right. Okay, cool. All right, so let's move forward with your guys' comments. 
I really should have background. Craig Busey. Should have uh, Craig Busey. <laughs> no, I gotta be like this. Oh, it's I, not working. I need more hair gel. It's not working. Uh, okay, that's closer. <laughs> time for your guys' comments. You gotta show your teeth, though. Your comments. Here, you used to show teeth. It's time to show you guys your comments. That's almost awesome. <laughs> that's like perfect almost. Let's do it. Oh my god, he was in Predator 2. I was in Predator 2. Charles Gaines. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it the whole time. Charles Gaines. Uh, we're talking about the merger between... We're talking about basically Faculus Rift. Okay, yep. Facebook and Oculus Rift. Charles Gaines says, The merger does make me wary. I've been leaning towards Sony and PS4, PlayStation 4 over a Steam box, and home sharing... Uh, uh, whoa. I've been leaning towards Sony and the PS4, PlayStation Now, over a Steam box and home streaming. Knowing that Facebook is probably going to be in my eyeballs doesn't make me too inclined to pop for an Oculus and that Sony has their own VR programs increasing that lean. I was just talking to Chris about this before the show and we just talked about it on our show last week if you guys haven't seen it. It's lost its purity, just like you said. It has. It's officially no longer a game system. So all gamers are like, fine, have fun. Yeah. Oculus Rift. Well, I think the disappointing part is, is like right now, the only thing you got is like Sony with Project Morpheus, which... The good thing about Oculus was it was for everything. Yeah. Sony's is going to be for Sony. Yeah. So yeah. Whereas, we're back to that again. Yeah, that's we're kind of disappointing. Back to that again. But. Yep. Well, we'll see how it goes. Time will tell. Well, that's the only <laughs> thing you do is see how it goes. I mean, but but the the clear thing is here, mm-hmm. perception has changed of the the VR darling. It's true. A lot. It's true. And he's not alone. You're not alone, Charles. Stello... Deuces says, I think Facebook is extending to video, streaming, and exclusive live content only available on Facebook, live shows, and sports. Using exclusive OR technology, Craig Chamberlain mentioned it at around 555. That will set Facebook apart from anyone else using special hardware to get, ac- inst- to get access to this content. Question is, will Facebook users buy the hardware? I, don't st- I still do not see the connection here. I don't, I don't see how... how it's like, oh, you had said uh, it'll set Facebook apart from anyone else using special hardware to get access to this content. Uh, who else is even bothering trying? I don't even think that there's a market for this yet. I think they're going to try to create a market out of something that doesn't exist. And that's what he's saying. Yeah. Is that what he's saying? Uh, I, I think I'm following what he's saying. I think so. They're trying to create a new market for this technology, but why? what is, what is the actual Facebook network other than a bunch of users have that would be remotely even re- interested in a technology like this yeah, other than they have this huge advertising model that they could just pull, punch in you can yeah, put it in I, front of people's faces which they got if they had two billion dollars they could do that anyway I, without facebook so anyway. it, it, it's it's a it, it's a horrible thing i think yeah, Betty Page. Agrees. And I'm not. We're not alone. Better, Betty Page agrees. I spent the better of uh, three hours yesterday removing viruses from my friend's computer that she got from playing Facebook's stupid games. I sure hope Oculus has more sense than that. Me too. I, I hope so too. <laughs> Me too, Betty Page. <laughs> we're gonna have Me to too. see where it goes. Um, <laughs> Gary Busey agrees. But I mean, this this is fascinating to me because this was a thing. I could just riff like three weeks ago could do no wrong. I know. <laughs> just watch our videos from three weeks ago. We're like, they're walking on water, people. Hell, uh, uh, six months ago, people were like using it and having to like puke bucket off to the side and they didn't care. They were like puking. They're like, this is so awesome. This is going to be great. This is the greatest thing since I've been able to talk to my TV. <laughs> It's awesome. It's not that awesome. <laughs> I love talking about TV. With Xbox. So. All right. Shall we, leave them, <sighs> shall we leave them with our clips of the week? Oh, no. The good news about the clips of the week. And then the We're clips of the week. We're going to try something. We're going to try something, people. For those Exciting. of you who survived it to the end of our video. <laughs> who put up with us. So we threw our clips on last, last episode we did. And I thought, you know, you guys are going to get tired of seeing us, right? Well, not during this show, but hopefully. Hopefully. But um, certainly don't want to see our clips of Titanfall all the time. So, Craig, what are we doing? Well, Chris. Wow, that was loud. Yeah, it was. If you decide you want your clips read or seen by the world. 
Not red, that doesn't make any sense. Your clips seen by the world. Make sure you send them to Craig at CraigTheTechTeacher.com. I'm gonna have a real email for us soon. Okay, but so until then. Email me the link to your OneDrive video of your favorite clip. 30 seconds max, people, please. Um, or 60 seconds, 30, oh 60, 30 60 seconds max. Email well, don't us. Don't say this like 15 minutes. Yeah, email, email us your clips and we will uh, put them at the end of our show, much like Ours, yeah. The ones we're about to show you. Yeah. Well, one second. I one just second. Oh, just, just throw it out there. Please make sure they're yours. Like, don't go uh, snatching somebody else's. Yeah, don't take other people's stuff. And make sure it's your clip of you playing, and if you if you do it, please send it to us, and we'll put it on. Yeah, we'll put it up. We'll, we'll, and you can send us even, like, uh, as long as you send us, like, uh, like your profile or something, we can maybe even put a picture of you up there. And the something. name you want to attach to and it. And your name, so all if that. you want to be John Smith, or if you hey, want you to know what? You know alias. what, Chris? Just show them an example on ours of what okay. it'll look like. It'll look like this with your name next to it and your picture. All right. So enjoy our clip of the week from Titanfall. Yeah, maybe next time it'll be yours. Maybe. Thank you guys for joining us. And subscribe at CraigChris.com. So enjoy these clips. 50%. Okay, your Titan's prepped for launch. Call it when ready. Good job on taking this hard point. Now we just got to take Charlie. 